Hare Krishna, my obeisances to all of you. Thank you for letting me be part of your celebration and remembrance of the Divine Appearance Day of our Guru Maharaj, His Holiness, Srila Radhana Swami. I'd like to start with um, just a few prayers of invocation. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Radhanata Swami Iti Namine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamenati Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschat Yudishatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Shrinatai Gora Premanandi Hari Hari So um, I was asked to speak a few words about just my meditation of His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj, share some thoughts and remembrances and maybe some pastimes uh, for some while. Um, to start with, if it would be okay, I would like to um, first, of course, offer my obeisances to all of the devotees who are watching. Many of you may be my senior uh, god brothers or god sisters. So um, please accept my obeisances. Um, my only qualification uh, in speaking to you all in this way is that somehow or other, I have received mercy from His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj, and he's allowed me to have um, his association uh, throughout uh, the last 20 years. Uh, or 
20, 20 years like that. So to start with, if it would be all right, I would like to read um, for you, with you, my offering for this year. Um, I was encouraged to write something in connection with uh, the devotees in Washington, D.C. area who are sending um, the, the offerings collected and sending them to him so he can see them in person. Dear Guru Maharaj, Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa, Parivraj Acharya, Astotarasata Sri Srimad, Srila Radhana Swami Maharaj, I bow down eternally at your lotus feet. Each day some unique moment reminds me of my incalculable fortune of having your association. You've chosen for more than two decades to shower the rainfall of your loving company upon me, a lifeless stone. What to speak of the compassion you've expressed by allowing me to take shelter as your disciple. I am now truly indebted to you so deeply, I can never repay as a son is to a father for giving the gift of life itself. In this dark age, you stand vigil, a hero in an unfailing line of spiritual warriors. Armed with the weapons of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by your own eternal father and master, his Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. One of the many qualities of a true master which you possess is your dedication to the essential nature of each person and every moment. You see the truest goal and do everything within your power to remove any obstacle standing between your loved ones and Krishna. And you love us all. You once told me, quote, when I give my heart to someone, I never take it back, end quote. Sometimes you are criticized for your fidelity to those like me, who are full of flaws and failures. But you are an unwavering friend to any who take shelter of you. You will not allow hopelessness to cloud your vision of our truest and highest selves. Though sometimes it seems you are the only one who sees that potential. Like Prahlad Maharaj, you are not lured into the us and them mentality. Who can be an enemy when all are friends in the Lord? We know this to be true because we see your example. Your life is our evidence. National Geographic wrote in 2013 about a Russian team who discovered a seed cache of Selene stenophylla, a flowering plant native to Siberia that had been buried and encased in ice near the banks of the Komya River. The seeds were gathered and nurtured and they grew, flowered, and after a year created seeds of their own. Radiocarbon dating confirmed that these seeds were 32,000 years old. Legend says that lotus seeds were found buried for thousands of years in the tombs of pharaohs in the Egyptian desert. After bringing them out of the darkness, expert gardeners have been able to coax them to sprout, allowing modern eyes to see flowers long thought lost to history. Maybe my stone-like heart is actually an ancient seed 
held for eons in the dry and desolate darkness. And now in the nourishing cycles of rain and sunshine of your divine company, I can feel my shell beginning to crack and my soul beginning to stir. I cannot imagine what mystical form might emerge, what dancing trunk and limbs may spring forth, what blossoms may appear. Please accept this offering of remembrance, meditation, and expression as a shower of flowers at your lotus feet. Please forgive my ignorant offenses. Please keep me in the shade of your lotus feet, your loving, humble, aspiring, and insignificant servant, Gauravani Das. Thank you all so much for allowing me to share this year's offering. Uh, maybe I can share just a few more thoughts or remembrances of very special times that I've had with, with His Holiness Radhana Swami. And the incredible thing is that uh, every time with His Holiness Radhana Maharaj seems to be incredible and special. And that for me is one of the uh, ways that I can feel Krishna's presence uh, and, and have faith is that when I'm in Maharaja's presence, I feel the presence of Srila Prabhupada and I feel the presence of Lord Chaitanya and of Lord Krishna. I first met Radhana Swami um, shortly after the community in Chopati had been welcomed back into ISKCON for uh, some years uh, because of a misunderstanding of Radhana Swami's intentions um, in connection with uh, the New Vrindavan community. Uh, Radhana Swami and His Holiness Bhakti Tirta Swami had been, um, uh, you know, kicked out, asked to leave the ISKCON society. And after many years of seeing them, observing them, and recognizing their qualities, they were welcomed back, invited back into the society, and given full honor and, and respect. And um, so I met Radhana Swami around that time when I met Bhakti Tirta Swami. And some of my earliest memories of His Holiness Radhana Swami are in Kirtan. Uh, the way that His Holiness Radhana Swami um, dances, as I understand it now after watching him for many years, it's like an expression of a, of a meditation on the dancing of Lord Chaitanya. And uh, I got to see Radhana Maharaj and other devotees, uh, including Chandramali Swami, Pankajangari Prabhu and Jananivas Prabhu, as well as I believe a devotee named Soma Prabhu, who's an old Nuvrindavan devotee, dancing in an assembly of Vaishnavas in the temple in Mayapur. And um, I, I want to say that this was maybe in 1998, um, something like that. Um, and it was it was like watching these five devotees in this circle dancing together. It was like watching um, the Panchatattva dancing in Mayapur. And it was somehow or other, someone asked me to lead Kirtan and they gave me the microphone. And so I got to help in this Kirtan of these wonderful devotees. Um, you know, in the place of Lord Chaitanya. And one of the funny memories that always causes me to be um, humble in Maharaj's presence is that I remember I started to develop a lot of love for him. And I, at one point, was thinking about initiation and the process of initiation. And I thought, 
you know, it's unfortunate that I would never be able to take shelter of a devotee like Radhana Swami because his dancing is so, you know, expressive and there's so many thousands of devotees around him. And, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to have an intimate relationship with him because there's so many devotees. So, you know, I should have, I should take initiation from someone different than that. Someone not Radhana Swami. And of course, years later, as Krishna led me to his lotus feet, I became more and more clear that I don't know anything and that my intelligence is, uh, you know, uh, useless <laughs> in understanding spiritual things. So um, I've had the opportunity of being in Kirtan with His Holiness Radhana Swami many times, and he always encourages me. Uh, we've done kirtan uh, in the, the Pune Yatra. Uh, when that was still happening, I've got to do kirtan on Yatra in South India with the descendants of um, of uh, Venkata Bhatta, Gopal Bhatta, Goswami's lineage in Sri Rangam and sannyasis from the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya who were glorifying Lord Chaitanya and said that we should unite the Sampradayas in a Sri Gaudiya Sampradaya for the celebration of the Lord's holy names. They actually said to Radhana Swami and the many thousands of devotees who were there at the time, they said, our own spiritual master, Ramanujacharya, he said that this is the practice for the age, the chanting of the holy name. And this very old sannyasi who was the lineage holder he said, and you are doing, but we are not doing. <laughs> this was his sweet humility. And they garlanded Maharaj and, and, and sat together and discussed uh, the Lord and his pastimes. Um, there was another kind of interesting uh, Leela that happened during in South India was uh, I was feeling quite distracted in my spiritual life and I was um, uh, there at the Yatra but I was dealing with something on the phone and uh, um, I had um, been invited to go with Maharaj and a few other devotees to go bathe in the holy river there at Sri Rangam um, near the birthplace of Yamunacharya, who's one of the Acharyas in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. And I had gotten off the phone and was still a little distracted, but I was in the mood very much, I want to follow Maharaj, I want to follow Maharaj. So these devotees were all clustered together coming down to the river to take bath. And so it was taking some time. Maharaj was in the front and other devotees were behind. And the river was stretched out in front of us. And they were going to the left, and there was a space to the right. And I thought, I should just go into the right so I'm not crowding around them. Just go off on my own quickly and, and dip in the water. And as I got to the shore of the river, um, I just thought for a second, mm, maybe better I don't go in the river. Maybe better I follow Maharaj. Wherever Maharaj goes, I'll go. So why am I going here? Let me just instead keep my mind in the mood of following and go there. And just as I thought that I was about to step in the river and I decided not to step, and as I stepped, I mean, as I pulled my foot back, I saw a snake, a water snake, swim right where I was stepping, and he swam away. Now, I have no idea you know, if the water snake was poisonous or not. But the lesson for me was there that by going off on my own, there's danger at every step. And by humbly and patiently following in the footsteps of my spiritual master, I'll always be protected and safe. Um, I've made so many offenses over the years to His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj, but somehow or other he never sees those offenses and always sees my best side and my best quality and always full of encouragement for myself and my family. 
Um, and you know, it's, it's such an important thing to recognize. Uh, one meditation that I had recently, um, and this can be the last thing that I share with all of you today. We see these great devotees like Radhanath Maharaj, and they remember, they meet thousands of people and they remember so many of them and intimate deal, details about them and, and have uh, intimate relationships with them. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a mystery somehow. How is this? It's a mystery. Uh, but sometimes we think, wow, incredible. Radhana Swami is so busy. Or like one time I was with His Holiness Jai Pataka Maharaj in Russia, and I wasn't with him. I was at a program where he was, and I'm, I was the only time I ever visited Russia. And he saw me, and he recognized me, but he, he couldn't place it. You know, why was I here in Russia? And it took him a second before he recognized me. And then he said, Gauravani, so nice to see you. Um, and I, I thought, wow, it's so incredible that with many thousands of disciples and knowing even many more thousands of people, Jayapataka Maharaj remembers me. How incredible is that? But I was just thinking recently that it's not, oh, it's the incredible thing is not that these devotees are able to manage their time to make time to meet others or manage their intelligence to remember everyone. Th those are materially incredible things. They have to do with tricks of memory or time management. But the really incredible thing is that they care and that they express their love to each devotee. Their ability to express that by Krishna's mercy has expanded. But the beautiful thing about bhakti and their example is not that they manage their time or that they manage their memory or intelligence. It's that the simple act that they actually care enough about each devotee to express that. And that love, whether we're able to express it to one person or to many thousands of people, that love itself is the magical thing of bhakti. And that love attracts the mercy of the Lord. So it's my humble desire to express my love and appreciation for all of you today who are here with me and who have allowed me to join your celebration. Um, uh, I, I, I beg to, to serve you in some way and hope that uh, these few words have given you some encouragement and enthusiasm in your spiritual life. Thank you for letting me serve my obeisances to you. All glories to His Holiness, Srila Radhana Swami. All glories to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. All glories to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda and the incredible lineage that we are so blessed to be part of. Hare Krishna.